Do you remember, in our first lesson for algebra, I said it'd be really cool, there were two kind of ideas that would be really, really useful if we developed algebra. We were talking about, number one, patterns, right? When you see a pattern and it's kind of like true for all of the numbers you notice. And there was something else. Do you remember what the other thing was? You can turn back in your books if you can't remember. Yeah, Frank. Um, it could be a theory. Sorry, what do you mean by a series? Um, series maybe, um, it's, it could be right or wrong. Oh, okay, so you're like making a statement and you're like, I'm not sure about this yeah. or not. Yeah, so in fact, that was kind of what we were looking at just now. Yeah, um, you might recall algebra will help us with this. Algebra will help us with this. But the main ideas were okay, if I don't know what the numbers are, right? Like, I'm not sure uh, how many eyes there are in the room or how many people, etc. Okay, I can still work with those numbers. And so we introduced this new language. Algebra is a whole new language. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay, now, because algebra is a language, that's why I bring this word into our lesson, okay? Uh, when you do French or German or Latin or Japanese or whichever it is, right, we routinely translate from one language into another. And if you're talking to people in Japan, then Japanese is a better language to use, right? We're going to be converting back and forth between two different languages today so that you can be fluent, conversant in both. Uh, one of them you're very, very good at already. And that's words, okay? So we're going to encounter like phrases and sentences just in normal English language. But then I want to convert those into algebra and sometimes the other way because that way I can work with them mathematically and that's really, really powerful. So let me show you some examples and we'll do these together. Okay. So you can see where this starts off. I hope that's big enough for all of you to read. Let's zoom in just a tad. There we go. So, can you, there we go, that's better. Oh no, it's zooming out because it wants to center. That's why, what a pain. Okay, and you can see where this line begins, right? It says, if A, and you'll notice it's italicized, it's kind of leading over like this. That's one of the ways you know that it's not just a letter, it's not just the letter A, it's a pronumeral. If it represents any number, so this is our, our language of algebra idea, then write an algebraic expression for. Okay, just pause for a second. Lots of big words, right? If I say to you an English expression or a Japanese expression, all I mean is like a string of words or symbols or characters that are in this language, right? So for example, here's a Chinese expression. Hmm. I hope I get this right, it'd be embarrassing if I don't. Don't ask me to write anything else in Chinese because that's the only thing I can write. That's my name, okay? So this is, this is a Chinese expression. I'm just using this language, okay? And I'm saying something in that language. Now have a look at this. See all of these? These are all English expressions, right? They're verbal expressions, they use words but I want to turn them into algebraic expressions. I want to use this new language that I've developed, okay? So with me, if you want to just write example here, we're going to have a go at these, converting these words into algebra. So if A is my number, right? What is three times that number? Yeah, Ranesh. Okay, very good. You've actually gone two steps. I'm going to write a step before that three times A, but we learned last time, we can abbreviate that even more. You know, if I say I've got three of these whiteboard markers, it'd be the same to say I have three whiteboard markers. So we kind of leave this times out and we just write three A. Now, let me point out here the first reason why we like doing this. Which is more concise, this or that? It's, it's a clear one, right? This is a lot quicker to write. And so if I want to work with this number, whatever it happens to be, it's going to be much better to write this rather than to constantly say it. three times that number, three times that number, and have to write that out. That would take me like a good 15, 20 seconds to write, at least if it was going to be legible for you. Okay, so there you go. That's what three times that number is. Let's have a look at the next one. Three less than that number. Huh. So if my number was, say, 10, what would be three less than that number? Seven. If my number were like say 105, what would be three less than that number? 102. 102. Okay, so you're always starting from that number. You're starting from that number. 
But your what operation am I doing here? I am yeah, true. Subtraction. I'm subtracting. I'm taking away like three less than that number. Do you see that? And you can put in if you thought about well, what if a was ten? Ten take away three is seven, like you told me before. So this is much quicker and more succinct to write than three less than that number. Let's have a look at the next one. The next consecutive number. You can see there's a bit of a bubble here in case you've never seen um, the word consecutive. It just means the next one. Just one after that, okay? So if A is my number, what's the next one? Yeah. Plus one. A plus one. Fantastic. Seven, to get to the next one, you add one. To get the next one, you add one. You guys are getting quite good at this. Okay, the number multiplied by itself. Yeah, Maria. Okay, excellent. A times itself, and then I can go another step and be even more succinct. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Okay. So now when you see this, you can read that as, oh, I know what that means. That just means whatever the number is, and I multiply it by itself. Okay. We're on the home stretch. Think back to when we were looking at um, uh, square roots and cube roots before. The square root of that number, how do I write this? Yeah. Uh, the square root symbol? Yeah, I have a whole new symbol for this, right? So that's what the square root symbol looks like. And, and where does the a belong? In the, in the yeah, just, just underneath, right? There we go. That's the square root of my number, a. And yeah. Don't you have to put a 2? Okay, now, great question. Um, if I wanted to be super you know, precise and non ambiguous, I could write a 2 here. Because when we've seen cube roots before, you'd write a three. You can actually take fourth and fifth and sixth roots if you wanted to. The reason why we don't tend to write a two there, and I'm okay if you don't write a two now, is because when you're doing this, square roots are by like far and away the most common type of, of root that we're gonna deal with. So when you don't see one there, we can assume that it's two, okay? Last one, one third of that number. One third of it, yeah. One third divided by eight. Okay, so, <laughs> now this is interesting. There's a few different ways I could write this, okay? So I'm going to start with this. I can say one third, what, what operation is of, like a size, three of these or five of these, which one would it be? Yeah, Aiden. It's multiplication. It's going to be multiplication, right? A third of something, right? Now I can then go ahead and write this in other ways, right? I could, um, I could put that A on the numerator, that would be true. But I also know that the fraction sign is kind of like another way of writing division. Do you see that? So all of these ways, just like in English, I can say the same sentence millions of different ways, right? And mean the same thing. I can say hi, I can say good day, I can say hello, I can say how are you, which might not even be a question, but just a way of greeting you, okay? Just like in algebra, there's lots of different ways, all valid, that you can use, okay? Does that make sense? Okay, now these are all pretty simple. Um, you can use these anytime you see words, you can translate them into algebra and then it makes them easier to work with, okay?